I've got good news and bad news, and I don't care which one you want first because I've already made the decision for you. I know the optimal order is always good before the bad. So big group hug in the shower tonight, let's hold hands and enter the smile zone together. One of the most annoying and degenerate pranksters the internet has spawned in recent memory has just been sentenced to 18 weeks in jail. His name is Mizzy, and for about a month he rose to internet infamy by doing some outrageously awful pranks. Basically, he'd just commit crimes and laugh about them while filming it, or he'd just make everyone's lives around him miserable. Just this plague of agony that swept through his local community to make everything a bit worse. I won't go through his entire resume of cringe, I'll just go ahead and give you some of his most embarrassing garbage. Although in his eyes, this is his magnum opus, these are his greatest hits. So the big one that made him pop off online is when him and his friends would walk into random people's houses to just frighten them, literally just kind of <laughs> breaking and entering. Then there was this one where he stole a woman's dog at the park and ran away with the dog. And then of course, who could forget the timeless classics, his iconic series here where he would go up to strangers and ask them if they want to die. Him and his equally pathetic friends would occasionally put on ski masks and run up on strangers, ambushing them, trying to block their way, asking them if they want to die over and over again. So, overall, pretty high-quality, harmless, gut-busting comedy here from one of the most brain-rotted, clout- poisoned, delusional, attention-starved worms TikTok has ever seen. Mizzy was able to get his name out there for about a month with a lot of people dunking on him, clowning on him, roasting him. He didn't really have fans except for like maybe seven or eight year olds that just liked the idea of being disruptive. But outside of that, it was everyone collectively just spitting on him. And then he landed an interview on a major television network where he made an absolute fucking fool of himself and pretty much overnight, like a fart into the wind, his online presence vanished. Well, kind of. Everyone figured out the garlic to this vampire. The one weakness every clout-obsessed turbo loser has. Being ignored. Not getting attention. Collectively, most people just stopped paying attention to Mizzy altogether. He was just this little nuisance that would buzz around occasionally, pester people, and they just kind of disregard it. No one was talking about him anymore. It took away all of his power, like Voldemort's name. <laughs> like, no one cared anymore about how many times Mizzy would do something that would get himself arrested. They'd just be like, oh, okay, moving on. It's like pee into a public pool. You expect it, and it's gross, sure, but at the end of the day, out of sight, out of mind, you move on pretty quickly. So Mizzy stopped getting attention, and after this month of infamy, everyone forgot about him. But you know who didn't? The law. You see, Mizzy this entire time has still been striving to reclaim that former glory, which is so pathetic that he considers it success when really it's anything but. What he believes is his career would be anyone else's unimaginable shame. He lives in such a distorted reality that he believes everyone shitting on him is a good thing. For him, people just knowing his name is a W. That's a big fucking victory royale right there. Whereas the only reason people know his name is because everyone dislikes him. Like his whole presence, his whole existence is to be disliked by people and he is proud of it. That is a nightmarish way of living in this fucking world. I can't, I can't believe it, but that's whatever it's it's his life i suppose if he wants to ruin it by all means so anyway that brings us to today where he has now been sentenced to 18 weeks in jail he went to trial last month where he was found guilty on two charges of breaching a court order and this court order is actually the most lenient shit imaginable basically it asked him to stop filming people without their consent and posting it online but this guy is an addict like, he can't stop scratching at his fucking neck to violate people's privacy, harass them, and then post it online for his content. He just has this inability to stop himself from being an insufferable asshole. This was the easiest court order ever issued. It was basically a don't be a douchebag order, and he failed. So now he's got 18 weeks detention in a young offender institution, and the judge told him, put bluntly, your pranks are not funny. Which I think is a beautiful thing to say from the judge. <laughs> Just scathing right to his face, cutting right to the core. 
just like, hey, listen, just to be honest, you suck. Like, I, I need you to understand me here. You're trash. Like, you are actual ass. Your pranks are horrible. I don't know how you sleep at night. You're bad. <laughs> like, I think that is just so beautiful in how frank he is with that. So then he said that the 19-year-old's pranks were motivated by a desire to be famous and to receive money and designer clothes from sponsors, which is something Mizzy himself said, which is pathetic, truly just sad. And then the judge continues, Your actions caused innocent members of the public significant harm and distress. You claimed on national television the law was weak. And now, 18 weeks in the slammer for it all. I will say, I wish they had went a little bit harder here. This is someone who has shown no remorse over any of this. And after he gets out, I have no doubt he's going right back to this behavior. I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever. I even made a video five months ago going over just how little he gives a fuck about any punishment that might come his way. He's not going to let it stop him from just being a complete douchebag loser. So even though he'll spend 18 weeks in this uh, detention facility, He's not going to stop this. This is all he seems to want to do with his life, is make everyone else's life more miserable and film it. So I don't think anything's going to change in the time that he'll spend away from society. I think he will come back and be just as annoying and degenerate as ever. That's my bold prediction on it, but no matter what, it is still good news though that he is finally receiving some kind of actual consequences for these actions. I think that is good news. That's something to make you smile. Now I'd like to give you some bad news. Colleen Ballinger is back. Colleen Ballinger made another apology video. This time, there's no music to it. Hello, everybody. Uh, sorry I've been gone for so long. I've really missed this. I've missed talking to everyone every single day. Um, obviously, the last video that I posted on here um, is really embarrassing, to say the least. I being accused of some pretty awful things and I just was mad and um, I should have handled that situation with maturity and empathy but instead I just let my ego take over and I'm really disappointed in myself. Now it's been quite a few months since this whole thing happened. Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings, was accused of communicating very inappropriately with underaged fans, talking about some really weird stuff with them, a lot of very not good things going on in some group chats with them. Uh, I'm not just going to go over the entire situation. I covered it back then. Tons of people did. But what ended up happening is, after all of these accusations came to light, she responded with a ukulele musical number that I, I think she was striving for a Grammy, which unfortunately she wasn't nominated for. She made a song, a, a real, uh, real song to make you wiggle your finger to, called The Toxic Gossip Train, where she... She didn't address anything really or like disprove any of the claims or defend herself. She just made a song. So this is now quite a few months later. She's now coming out and saying that that whole thing was embarrassing and that, you know, she regrets the way she handled it, should have handled it with maturity. But I'm going to say you should never regret writing the toxic gossip train. That song took the billboard charts by storm. You made you made a bop. Like what you should be apologizing for is what you've actually been accused of, and then actually maybe try and talk about that instead, as opposed to your ukulele song. Like, that's not the big problem here. That's not the, the huge stain that needs to be addressed. Yeah, the ukulele song was a bafflingly cringe decision to do that, but the real thing here, the actual meat, is about all the accusations with the way that you've communicated with minors over the years and the group chats and like the sexual conversations you had with them about really awful and very weird things. That's what you need to actually talk about. Over the last 15 years of my career, there have been moments where I was immature and inappropriate with some of my comedy. And there were times when I did not put enough thought into some of my fan interactions. And because of that behavior, people got hurt and I am so sorry. I never wanted to hurt anybody, but it's clear that I did and I feel so terrible about that. Um, I also feel like there's probably people who are disappointed or feel abandoned by me because of my silence over the last few months. Um, and I'm so sorry about that as well. I And this is just missing the mark in my opinion. You're just giving a very vague response to a very specific set of awful allegations. By just 
delivering this blanketed, I went too far with my comedy, made some mistakes, hurt people, I'm sorry. You're not really doing anything besides just trying to move on from this as quickly as possible and hope that the bare minimum here is enough for an audience to stick with you. After she posted this fall vlog, she's now posted an additional, I think, three or four videos since now. She's doing daily posting again. So to me, this all just seems like, I'll define, I'll just reluctantly say I'm sorry, hopefully an audience will stick around for a little bit, and I'm just going to start bombarding them with a ton of content to flood the rest of this out so that way people can just forget about it. That to me is what this comes across as. The accusations that have been made against her, as well as a lot of the things that have been brought to the public eye, are pretty awful. Like, it's not something that you can just, like, you know, wipe away with a statement like, it was just comedy that went too far and it was a mistake. Because, like, it doesn't seem like there was anything comedic about it, or even, like, supposed to be comedic about some of the things that have come out. It's just, like, pretty deplorable. Like, I feel like it warrants more of a direct tackling of what has been discussed and talked about. You know, like, just a more thorough explanation, I think, is warranted for the victims that have been affected by what you've done. This is just seems very, like, I, I don't know the right word, but it seems very disingenuous and sincere, perhaps, where it's just trying to do as little as possible so you can continue to try and have your Colleen Vlogs channel do daily content and have an audience. So I'm gonna do everything that I can to make sure that I create a positive, kind, inclusive, safe space online with my content. And if you want to be a part of my journey online, I would love to have you. And if not, I completely understand. Um, I do not expect anyone to welcome me back with open arms. I don't expect to change anyone's mind with this video. I just wanted to come on here and say that I'm sorry. And um, I wanted to try to show people that it's possible for someone to grow and learn and be better after making mistakes many, many years ago. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to try to vlog again, and today I'm just gonna... I cut out a little section in the middle there where she was talking about how, first and foremost, she's a mother, and she was explaining why she hasn't spoken on this sooner, and also that she's been trying to listen and learn from everything with what everyone's been saying. And then eventually it leads to this, where she talks about how she doesn't expect to change anyone's mind, but she hopes that she can try and prove that you can make up for past mistakes and her path forward is vlogging so then she transitions this apology into a vlog which i think is a really weird decision to make i don't know why you wouldn't make this two videos i mean maybe because the apologies is only like three minutes long and it's not specific and it still doesn't even directly talk about any of the accusations it just tiptoes around all of it it really feels like the apology is more of like an avoidance thing where she can just loosely talk around the subject and say that she's sorry for it without ever needing to explain herself or what happened or her actions or intentions or anything behind all of it. So it really seems like the intention was get the I'm sorry's out and hope the audience is receptive to it and will stick around to watch the vlogs. And her gamble paid off. She was right. She knew her audience. If you read the comments, it's nothing but overwhelming support for her, and the views on her vlogs are great. So, yeah, I'm still a bit stunned by the comments here. A lot of them are saying, This is what you should have said to begin with. We forgive you now. Now we understand. It's all good. What the fuck? She still didn't say anything. <laughs> like, did you even watch the video? She still said nothing. It's like, the second she said, I'm sorry, everything else went out the window as if it never even existed. She has still not even said anything about any of the actual accusations or anything about it. She just loosely said, ooh, those jokes didn't land. Bit of a mistake, and I know people got hurt. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, I guess she doesn't need to. She will, I suppose, continue to do just fine here without ever actually talking about all of these things. I really don't think you can just write off a lot of what's come out about the way she behaved around minors as just her being a quirky, zany jokester. Like, there's there's really no way of looking at it in any way that isn't weird. But whatever, I guess. It, her audience has moved past it and forgiven her, so she's back to daily vlogging and will probably continue to do just fine. So yeah, I just wanted to give a little update here on some good and some, some bad news. That's really about it. See ya.